album uh, called The Middle Passage, and then a mixtape with Green Lantern. So, it's two, two projects. Mixtape hopefully end of the summer, and album end of the year, probably. Which is good as me, it's just got better marketing schemes I lead you to your own destruction like spark in a fiend Cause you got jealousy in your voice like star screen Come on! The primary reason that I hate y'all back The middle passage is real simple, I mean It's simple and it's complicated uh, On one hand, it's just That the middle passage, the history of it, if you read it Is the time when uh, people stole African people and brought them here to America, where they had just recently killed all the native people and settled on the land. And they didn't want to work the land themselves, so the Europeans um, brought the black people and indoctrinated them. Meaning, you weren't just made a slave on a boat. You had to be raped and tortured and all this other shit in the West Indies or in the slave castles off the coast of Africa, and then brought here, uh, conditioned to be a slave. So. The way I look at it is, when I'm in the underground, I'm free. I'm the nigga that can say anything he wants to. But once you step to the commercial world, people start putting restraints on you. You can't, you can't say this. We can't put this on the air. That's how you start thinking. You start thinking, man, how, how, I can't make this song. I can't put this song on my album because the label's going to say no. Because people are going to, nah, that, that's ridiculous. I can't have that. That's slavery, you know what I mean? And then they own your masters, they own your publishing, you know, and with your publishing, that means they get money off your performance rights. It's you got problems, it's got nothing to do with luck. It just means that a million people are stupid as fuck. Any, any old school artist, any true school artist, somebody who was, was making records, making hits in the 80s and 90s, you ask them, whose kids went to college off your album? You know, and they'll tell you straight up. Because those brothers are veterans and they understand it. And that's what I learned the most from, from hip hop. That's what inspired me to be like the way I am. Because it's not just revolution I rhyme about, it's what I live. You know what I mean? Like in all the business that I do. I can't be that dude that's just rhyming about it and then I'm getting, you know, jerked by some major. I can't, I can't do that. Man. Things have to be the proper way. So that's why the album is like that. Because I feel like I'm moving closer to. The commercial world, I sell more records. I, I'm no more artists that are in that world, but I, I have no desire to be a part of that. I have no desire to, to, to chain myself up to this shit. Stay independent forever until I get married. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'll be independent until I get married, and I'm definitely not gonna be married to no rich white dude that tells me what I can fucking say on record or not. That's that's unexcusable. Or some rich black dude that works for some rich white dude, because that's what it is. You know, there's an there's there's an apparent idea that you know now black and brown people have more control over our music because there's a few executives, and that doesn't mean shit, yo. Just because you have a few niggas running around in the game that have power doesn't mean that the game's still not controlled by some so The world is controlled by them. So why wouldn't rap be controlled by them? I mean, do the knowledge, nigga. <laughs> I, I lost a lot of people to, to violence in the streets and, and to just sickness, which is crazy. There's a lot of sickness now in America and in other countries that have genetically um, processed food. You know what I mean? The more that unnatural shit gets in your body, it creates cancer. You know, these people are dying out there and they don't even know it. They're, they're, they're going to McDonald's, they're going to Burger King, going to all these places. And, you know, I didn't know it when I was a kid. Last time I came here, I was still ignorant to a lot of that stuff. I was like, man, fuck that. I'll eat whatever I want. But now it's just, it makes so much sense. And I'm, it's not like I'm out there telling niggas what to do or what to eat. Fuck you. You can eat whatever you want and die. But, I mean... For the people that want to live and for the people that, that want to see their kids have a healthy life. You know what I mean? It's so obvious the type of food they push to a certain type of people. You know what I mean? Because that's how they see us. They see us like fast food. We are the, 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 the 
working class people that are expendable to all these countries. And that's why we come here. We come here because this country was in other places. You know what I mean? In America, you know, why are Mexicans in America? Because part of America used to be Mexico. And it was conquered and you threw them out. I'm not hating on the commercial world. I sold 80,000 records at $6 a pop. You do the math, motherfucker. What do I need to hate on people for? I have three apartments, I own a house, I own a farm. I don't you see me, don't see me wear jewelry because I invest my money in land and in long-term investments, businesses. I mean in Peru, it's the bottom line is what counts in other countries. You know what I mean? In the Middle East, in Latin America, in Africa, you know what I mean? You look like a fool if you're walking around with gold and jewelry on and you don't own nothing. You know, people look at you and just laugh. You know, here in America, that's that's seen as a sign of success. Uh, in other countries, that's seen as a sign of success. But if you think about it, why would you want to own stones and metal when you could own the, the ground, the earth that the stones and the metal come out of? That is true wealth. So that's what I invested my money in, to buying land, and that's what I have out there. So, you know, I don't use my land to exploit. You know, most of the crops go to the farmers who work the land. You know, I get some extra for my family that's out there, so they can eat too. Do you ever slap a leader blasphemy of a nation? Got my back to the wall because I'm facing assassination. And nobody in America likes uh, the administration. Nobody likes what's going on. The war is very unpopular. But, like, that, this people don't understand it. I, I was talking about stuff like that since the day after September 11th. Like, I did my research. I, I, I researched who Bin Laden was of who made him like that, who was funding him, how we funded the Taliban, how we were funding the, 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 the Mujahideen back in the day. And then now everyone want to rhyme about it, like, like, where the fuck were you for the past five, six years? Where were you? Now all of a sudden niggas is revolutionary, like that, that's amazing. So there are people like, like we, like Saigon, like Dead Prez, and, and a bunch of other people that, that have always been like that. And that's why I respect them a lot because even when it wasn't popular to be like that, they were still like that. Now it's popular to not like the government, so people feel safe making those songs and putting shit out like that and acting like they're the new thing in hip-hop. Like, that's not a new thing in hip-hop. That's the oldest thing in hip-hop there is. That's, that, that was like, you know, the message with Melly Mel and all them. That, that's what niggas was rhyming about, the real shit going on. We're not doing something new in hip-hop about being revolutionary. We doing the most original thing that hip hop was created for by doing this type of music. This is the point from which I can never retreat. Cause if I turn that now, they can never be peace. This is the point from which I die succeeding in the struggle. Come on. I know I'm alive and I bleed from now on. It can never be the same as before. Cause the place that I'm from doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. You hooked up with Saigon for uh... uh yeah, we we uh we talked about doing some stuff. I, I did a couple of shows with him and uh you know, I really hope for his success in, in, in what he's doing because he has, to some extent, a lot of that commercial buzz around him because of what he does now. You know what I mean? With the HBO and all that shit. But I mean, he's, he's a good brother, man. I think he could do it. I think he could do it. Do you think he's important for the, for the future of New York hip hop? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if they let him say what he want to say. I know he want to say some crazy shit on his record. And, you know, it's just a question of whether Atlantic is going to be like, all right, yes or no. They say the rebels in the rack still fight for Saddam. That's bullshit. Show you why it's so wrong. Because if another country made in my hood tonight, it'll be poor if they do all of it. Why should I? Well, I mean, the thing was this. Green Lantern made the hook, and he invited most Depp to say whatever he said. I've always had the contention that... Um, I believe that there were certain forces outside the United States, whether you did lie and al-Qaeda or whatever it is, that are involved in it. I think there were certain forces within the United States. I said on volume two that I didn't think Bush did it because he isn't that smart. And I, I think while Bush plays stupid, he understands where his money's coming from. He's not as stupid as he pretends to be. And he's definitely not as stupid as Europe thinks he is, or I, people think they are. You know, it's not that American people are more ignorant is that their ignorance is so much more noticeable because they're in control of the world. 
you know what I mean? Or in control of certain world economies on the Western Hemisphere. You know, people, there, there's, there's more human rights abuses in uh, Indonesia, in China, I mean, I'm sorry, in, uh, in Indonesia and the Philippines than there are in China. But we highlight China because why? Because there's such a big entity on the Eastern Hemisphere. You know, because they have more people there when more shit happens. It's like New York. New York is not the most dangerous city in America. It's, I think that was a, a question that someone from Double Excel asked me. They asked me if 50 wanted to sign me because he was signing a whole bunch of new acts and looking at people in the underground. They were like, yo, your name always comes up in the underground because you sell the most records out of a lot of them. And, you know, while a very controversial figure sometimes, people would say, they were like, what would you feel like if you came inside you. And I've been to Shady Records, I've been to Interscope, I've been to all the places, but I mean, it just, I, I said that the business would have to be right. That's all I said. I didn't say flat out no, uh, you know what I mean? A lot of rappers you know, they hate 50 Cent. I'm like, I don't care, you know. I don't go around hating people I don't know. I don't know that motherfucker from a hole in the wall. So how can I tell you that he's a horrible person? I don't know him. Why, why am I going to listen to people's stories? People say, I'm fucked up, yo. Or Mortal Technique and his people are crazy. They kick some promoter down the stairs. They fuck somebody up. The niggas always start trouble. Like, I did all that stuff for a reason, man. I don't fuck up people for no reason. Uh, it's a documentary about all the places I've ever been, shows I rock, and like a rise to where I am now from having nothing. So, Mortal Technique Worldwide. Yeah, yeah, Mortal Technique from coming from Peru when it was like, Fucking bombed out, civil war, CIA, inflation, crazy. To come into Harlem, when Harlem was nuts, wherever the fuck you at. Before it was owned by Columbia University, Harlem used to be real gangster. Like, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's, 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 it follows my progression as an artist, as an individual, and as somebody that's more than an artist. Because I don't think it's done with art. I feel like if all I ever do is make music about revolutionary things, then I, I consider that a failure. Because I am a student of revolution and an apprentice of revolution. And one day, very soon, I'm going to make that step.